I'm absolutely delighted to be honored with the New London Award today. Although at my age, and as someone who spent his whole life in this wonderful city, New Londoner could seem to be somewhat ironic. Despite a background of political confusion, London is standing up well. The proof of this is in the amount of space that international companies have continued to take since the referendum vote and must be seen as a positive in a time when negative thinking predominates. London is a great city. However, if I look back to when Derwent Valley was first formed in 1984, there are a number of things that were about New London and Derwent's approach. With the majority of the office market focused on the apparently limitless opportunities offered by Big Bang and the extraordinary expansion in London's financial market. Derwent was more focused on the change to the use classes order, which allowed industrial space to become B1 offices, a true bonanza. Although this legislative change may not have had such an impact on the skyline, it has had a significant effect on the new London of the last 30 years. So for Derwent London, started in Islington, on the Colebrook and Wilmar estates, where, as Peter said, our mastermind of design and my partner for 35 years in business, Simon Silver, appointed little firm Troughton McCaslam to breathe life back into three neglected industrial buildings, converting them into office studios, which I am pleased to say are still in use today. The success of these projects encouraged us to do more, and we haven't regretted it. In total, Derwent London has developed or refurbished over five million square feet, creating some remarkable buildings in collaboration with some wonderful architects, and therefore endorsing our commitment to London. Many of these were in new London office locations, as we tended to stay clear of prime city and West End hotspots. I like to think that Derwent helped parts of New London thrive, especially with the growth of the creative industries in the last few years, which has been vital for London's continuing economic success. These projects range from refurbishments like Greencoat and Horsefree House in Victoria, Angel Building in Islington, T Building in Shoreditch, to new build developments such as White Collar Factory in Old Street, and our recently completed Brunel Building at Paddington. Let's find this. Here we go. From these, a Derwent brand grew, and this is the product of not just the Derwent team, but our consultants and advisors, many of whom have stuck with us over many years. Whilst writing this speech, I was struck by how a list of our wonderful architects would make an excellent cast of characters in a more Shakespearean London, such as in this building. We would have a priest, Keith Priest, Brunel Building, a squire, the great Michael Squires, a yeoman, Matt Yeoman, and a Piercy, Stuart Piercy. The stretch would, however, have to include an Alford in our drama, but we couldn't find a name for him, so therefore we would use him as the location. But in any case, I'm here to talk about New London, not to reminisce on the past. Of all our developments, White Collar Factory represented one of the most revolutionary, as it was a product of over seven years' research following the global financial crisis. AHMM, Arup, AKT, and Derwent looked at what were the defining characteristics behind successful industrial to office conversions. The result was a purpose-built 17-story industrial-style office building with 3.5 million floors to soffits, concrete core cooling, and opening windows. Some of these features have been carried forward in our two latest schemes, Soho Place over Tottenham Court Road Crossrail Station and the Featherstone Building, which adjoins White Collar Factory and is essentially its little sister. As well as creating new, generous, flexible, and uncluttered internal spaces, we also realized that occupiers were expecting more from their landlords. 
So for many years, Derwent has been looking to add amenities, from rooftop terraces to ground floor cafes and exciting hotel style receptions with vibrant publicly accessible meeting areas. One of our buildings boasts a rooftop swimming pool with another hosting a 150 meter running track. These features have become increasingly important as business use their buildings and workspace to attract young staff in the war for talent, rather than a projection of corporate chic. As we have grown in size, our developments have grown in scale. We have become increasingly aware of the impact of our buildings have had on our neighborhoods and climate change. While we recognize that large developments are unlikely to attract universal approval, we take our responsibilities very seriously, breathing new life into dull facades such as Oliver's Yard, Angel Building, and our Tottenham Court Walk. We have provided new public space at Old Street Yard and will provide a new pocket park at 80 Charlotte Street. In addition to providing affordable housing and a fresh move, Derwent are about to provide affordable offices. Over and above the planning requirements, we have been running two community funds supporting local initiative in the Tech Belt and the West End for six years, and we've just committed to another three. So as well as delivering New London as long-term investors, we must ensure we enhance the existing fabric as well. One thing I have learned is that the pattern of office demands keep changing. So we have had to remain innovative to keep pace with this market, legislation, and society as a whole. So maybe it is in respect of this entrepreneurial skill to keep evolving with the demands of this great and ever-changing city that the whole team at Derwent London deserve to be called New Londoners. A special thanks to Peter Murray, who has done so much for NLA and everything. He kicked off around the same time as Simon and I. He's been a great friend and does a tremendous amount. Anyway, thank you again for this generous and prestigious award. It is so deeply appreciated. Thank you very much.